Welcome everyone. I'm Carlos Carbonell, illustrator and digital artist. In this tutorial I will show you how to paint a portrait of this cute girl. It's a tutorial for Rebel 7, but may serve for any previous version. I will use charcoal brushes, they are pretty good to paint portraits. I'm not an experienced portrait artist, but I know the fundamentals. Being a non-professional of the subject, I will paint it with a beginner approach. This is, focusing on proportions and painting with values instead of doing a full color painting. You may paint by values using any color and it shades to white or black. I chose to do it entirely in black and white. You may choose any canvas size you wish. Charcoal brushes in Rebel aren't so performance restricted with higher canvas sizes. I use the same size as the reference, a similar size to full 4K. For canvas color I selected the default color. The paper selection is more relevant to charcoal brushes, because they are very influenced by the paper grain. My recommendation is you use the default hot pressed paper, because it has small grain. This helps charcoal brushes to not be so grainy. You may use blank paper if you wish. In case you select a rough paper, reduce the scale at minimum. I did a selection of brushes on a new brush group in pencils category. All of these brushes are copied from oil category. I like the knives and oil rakes. I import the reference. When you paint portraits, the most important thing is to be precise with proportions. There's different approaches to use the right proportions. If you don't have enough experience, you may want to trace. This is a cheat if you are an already experienced painter. But not when you start painting digitally. Take into account that you must stop using the trace feature as soon as possible. Otherwise, your mind and your hand will never learn how to do the things correctly. Instead, I will use the reference guides. In reference panel, I start adding some guides in the places that seem good for me. I look for the shape of the face, to not be too thin or too wide. Then, the placement of the eyes, nose and mouth. These guides will appear in the canvas. I still will have to be precise in order to make a convincing portrait, but I don't need to worry so much about proportions. With the fill tool I fill the layer with a neutral gray, similar in value to the background of the reference. Doing this is a good idea when you paint by values, even if you want to leave the canvas in white color. This helps a lot to find the right values. If you don't do that, it's very easy to paint too dark or to light. The first stage is the same as with any artwork. I first define the areas and first values very roughly. You don't need to be very precise. But you also need to be careful to no paint out of place. For this purpose, the reference guides help a lot. It's good to start with the dark and light zones. I'm using big brush strokes, I will blend and polish later if necessary. I slowly keep adding features and start blending. For blending I use the same brush in blend mode, by pressing the shortcut for. As I keep going, I start using smaller brush sizes, refining the areas and placing smaller features. You must watch if that, even at this early stage, the artwork is starting to look like the reference. At least, everything must look in place. Only if you are convinced, you can keep painting. Otherwise, you must keep tweaking the shadow areas and the shapes.
I start adding light areas. I also use the same tool in Blender mode. At this point I don't blend to make look it soft like the reference, but to make sure everything is in the right place. As I keep going, I start being more precise. The usual workflow is to paint anything, then blend it. I switch between paint and blend modes constantly. I also use eraser if necessary. I use the same tool as eraser by pressing the shortcut 5. In the reference, the nose has more relevance than usual. So, I try to be more careful in that area. I always struggle a lot with mouth and lips. At this point, I'm just satisfied having the right shape. I will focus later on the shading of the mouth. The face seems good. So I start shading the hat. If you need to make sure everything is in place and have the right proportions, show the reference on the canvas. Then hide and show your painting layer to see if something is out of place. To paint the features outside the face, I do it very loose and rough. This creates a contrast between the face and the other features. The face will be more polished and detailed, so anyone who watch your artwork will always be attracted first by the face. The hair will have more details than the hat. But I paint it loose too, like the hat. I apply more brush strokes because this area have more features and details. I blended the hat area, but leaving the edges loose. You must have control over the edges. A good practice is to keep the edges of the main feature as polished as possible. In this case, this is the face. But in the other areas, the edges must be more soft or loose. I define a little the hat before I continue with the face. It seems everything is set up correctly. So I start the main painting process, being more precise and adding some details. I start with the face. The eyes are very hard for me. I do my best, but they always look bad to me. Anyway, I start painting the eyes, as close as possible to the reference. This reference only has one visible eye. The other is visible too, but almost hidden. This makes things easier. The process is always the same. Paint then blend. At this point, you can start using the blender tool. Don't use the soft brush, select the soft noisy one. For details, you can use any brush at smaller sizes. Or any pencil. Sometimes the details look too sharp or too dark. In this case, use the blender tool, but don't apply too much pressure with your stylus. This soften everything a little, without losing detail. I start picking the colors directly on the canvas, because it already has so many shades, and is faster than going to the color wheel. I try to paint the eyes as best as possible, being as close as possible to the reference. 
but I don't worry to paint each detail, I will polish everything during last stage. You must take caution when painting the lips. It's easy to paint it wrong, by making them too thin, or painting the wrong shape. You also need to add some dimension to them, to avoid making them look too flat. To nose is not hard as the lips or the eyes. But you also need to be careful. I add some highlights to the lips, but not too much. The main features of the face must be more polished but I decided I will take care of them later. I add a little of shades to the skin. I'm gonna paint the background. This part will be very short. I will not paint any detail or feature, just random brush strokes. I start painting with a grainy brush, with different shades of grey. The style looks too different to the one I used with the girl. So, I select one of the palette knives I used to paint the girl, and start blending everything. It looks too soft, so I paint few brush strokes and blend them. The background don't need more work, so I leave as it is. This girl don't have so many hair strands. Otherwise, I must paint the dimension and direction of each strand. Anyway, I blend all the hairs to create the feel of hair strands, but I don't add dimension. I blend some zones that I consider they must look softer. I start painting the hairs. For that purpose, the best brushes are the rakes, because they create parallel lines. The trick is to paint few brush strokes to create the feel of much more hairs than you really painted. Paint in different directions, this helps to add dimension. Try to paint in the same hair direction of the reference. Don't paint too much hairs. It's easy to overdo it. Use the same rake brushes in blender mode. This adds even more hairs. It also helps the hairs look more soft and natural. Change the color to add more dark or lighter hairs. I will add few individual hairs, by using any pencil. This adds a lot of interest and variety. It also helps to look the hairs more natural. You don't need to paint lots of individual hairs. Just few here and there. The direction of these hairs must follow a different direction from the main hair strands. Here you can be more creative if you wish. You can also use them to add some highlights. I add some hairs also over the eyes. Now that area starts to look good. I try to paint the hairs as polished as possible. I will not retouch them so much in the final stage. Sometimes my brush strokes go over an undesired area. I don't worry about that, I will paint over later on. For now, I stay focused on the hairs, and painting them as loose as possible.
at this point I consider the main painting process finished. I will paint any feature that I consider necessary, add details and make some tweaks. I start by refining some shapes and adding some highlights here and there. I jump from one place to another. This helps to not stay too much in the same area, and start watching the entire painting as a whole. I soften some edges, to not look so sharp, especially on the hairs. You may notice I zoom out a lot. It's the same that watching your artwork from distance. This helps to watch it as a whole. Usually I will do that by using the navigator or the preview panel. But at the moment of doing this tutorial, it was a bug that don't update those panels. So I had to do it manually. Anyway, sometimes I do it, despite having the preview panel open. I add some shadows to the face and the hairs. I also add some light to the hat, in the area near the nose. The reference don't have that, but I thought it makes this zone more interesting. You can use the layer blending mode overlay. It adds darker tones to already dark areas, and light to already lighter areas. If you paint with color, it will also shift the hue of the colors. But this don't happens when you paint with gray tones. So, this is a nice way to add local contrast, without over darkening or over lighten your details. I add some details to the hat band, but not so much. Just the glimpse of details. I add some light and shadows to the face. Here I needed to be very careful, I don't want to overdo it. I wanted to add some freckles, but very small, like the reference. I use one of the brushes on the dry media group. I tested some of them, looking to a texture with grain not so small or not so big. I make this process on a new layer. This way, I can delete any freckle without problems. I retouch a little the face. I decided to add some texture to the hat. The other areas look much more detailed, this makes the hat look too flat. To add texture, I use the same approach I did for the freckles. At this point I started to jump here and there again, adding small details and polishing anything. To be honest, the artwork was already good like this but I keep making tweaks. I must have stopped here and wait some time. With a fresh point of view, it's easier to view any mistake or any zone that needs more attention.
always remember to sign your artwork. This is the final process. The artwork is already finished. But it's always a good idea to make a break, to have a fresh point of view. I did a break and decided to add more tweaks. I added a little of shadow in the lower part of the background. This helps the face to stand out a little more. I was not convinced, and I didn't know why. So, I exported the artwork to the desktop. I compared the reference and the artwork using the Mac OS preview feature. This helped me to view that the face shape was not wide enough. The hairs covered too much the face. I solved that by painting over that area. I tweaked a little bit the eye. I added some contrast to the entire artwork using the hue saturation effect. I keep making tweaks here and there until I'm satisfied. And this is the process I did for this artwork. Remember that this is a beginner process. I'm not a professional portrait artist. I could add some color if I wish. You can do that easily with Rebel. But I was really satisfied with this artwork being in black and white, and I didn't want it to break anything or making it worse. Anyway, this may be a good subject for another tutorial. I hope you like this tutorial. If this is the case, please subscribe to my channel, it will help me a lot to grow my channel and keep doing tutorials. Let me know anything in the comments. For example, if you are interested in how to paint over black and white artworks. Be happy and see you in the next video.